In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you all. Welcome to the Mass. We celebrate together. It's a lovely sunny day outside this autumn morning. Welcome. We always call to mind our many sins, confident of God's desire to understand our human frailty, to be ready to forgive. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin. Pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, increase our faith, our hope, and our charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat for the readings. The people of God are reminded that they were once captives themselves, living in dreadful circumstances, so now they should treat impoverished people, they should treat them kindly and well. Let's listen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, tell the sons of Israel this, you must not molest a stranger or oppress him, for you lived as strangers in the land of Egypt. You must not be harsh with the widow or with the orphan, if you are harsh with them, they will surely cry out to me and be sure I shall hear their cry. My anger will flare and I shall kill you with a sword. Your own wives will be widows, your own children orphans. If you lend money to any of my people, to any poor man among you, you must not play the usurer with him. You must not demand interest from him. If you take another's cloak as a pledge, you must give it back to him before sunset. It is all the covering he has. It is the cloak he wraps his body in. What else would he sleep in? If he cries to me, I will listen, for I am full of pity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You observed the sort of life we lived when we were with you, which was for your instruction, 
and you were led to become imitators of us and of the Lord. And it was with the joy of the Holy Spirit that you took to the gospel in spite of the great opposition all round you. This has made you the great example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia, since it was from you that the word of the Lord started to spread. And not only throughout Macedonia and Achaia, for the news of your faith in God has spread everywhere. We do not need to tell other people about it. Other people tell us how we started the work among you, how you broke with idolatry when you were converted to God and became servants of the real living God, and how you are now waiting for Jesus, his son, whom he raised from the dead to come from heaven to save us from the retribution which is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they got together, and to disconcert him, one of them put a question. Master, he said, which is the greatest commandment of the law? And Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second resembles it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole of the law and the prophets also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Please take a seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We ask God to bless these few simple words. <clears throat> There's the story of the man who was a bit short of cash, so he thought he'd say a little prayer to God, and he spoke to God and said, is it true, God, that for you, one million years are just the same as a second? And God nodded and said, yes, just like a second. And is it true, God, that for you, one million pound is just the same as a penny? And God died and said, it is indeed. In that case, the man said, why don't you give me one million pound? And God replied, certainly, my child. Can you just hold on a second? <laughs> Not my best. Today, Jesus is asked a trick question. Which is the greatest commandment? Well, it's a multi-choice question. There are 613 who can memorize all of them. There's one for every bone in the human body, Add that to every day of the year. What's the number? 613. A lot to choose from. God has a very simple answer. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. But you see, your neighbor is a creature of flesh and of blood. Your neighbor has faults and feelings, and your neighbor is constantly going to irritate you. So you can't just say, I love people. 
I love the Ethiopians. I love the Eskimos. Because what if the Eskimo in the next igloo is playing his music so loud you can't sleep and his dog is barking all night? Do you still love him? A monk was once asked, what's the worst thing about the monastic life? What do you think? Is it the cold stone chapel in the winter time? Is it the long hours of silence? No, the monk said, the worst thing is the man, the neighbor in the next cell, because he snores all night. One night, I can handle that. It's good enough for 20 years, and it drives me almost insane. How do you resolve these things? Leviticus has an answer. You should surely rebuke your neighbor. That seems a contradiction. Love your neighbor, but rebuke your neighbor. It suggests that love is tough, and where toughness is needed, bring the matter up. Bring the matter up so that wrongs can be righted and so that obstacles to friendship can be removed. But the love to which God calls us, the neighbor, has a face. And that face isn't necessarily a very pretty face. And people have fought to death over a cypress hedge that is so high that the sun can't get into your vegetable patch. You hope to resolve these things before they go too far. And I sometimes think, what a tragedy if we irritate each other so much in the church that people say, I'm not going back because it's the priest or it's the music or it's the fellow parishioners that irritate me. I'm not going back. Do we not get it? Surely that our love, our tolerance is sometimes being tested and each successful rung on that ladder of perfection is a couple of inches closer to perfection, closer to God. So there's a lovely piece of advice given in the first reading. I'd, I'd never noticed it before. If your neighbor needs money, you give him a hundred pound. He's a poor man. What does he give you in collateral? He gives you his coat, but it's maybe his only coat. He wears it day and night, and when the sun goes down, the desert at night can freeze over. What do you do? The advice is clear. Give him his coat back, regardless of whether or not the debt is paid. And then when the sun rises in the morning, he might just hand his coat back again as collateral. What does that say to us? The relationships which are built on trust and tolerance are more precious than all the gold bars that we may have in the bank. Much more precious. Anybody prays we ask God for the gift of tolerance. It's a wonderful gift. Lord, hear us. And we ask for the gift of wisdom so that when things have got to be said, they are said, but always preceded with prayer and always said with love and kindness. Lord, hear us. And we know that we ourselves irritate people. We all do. We irritate each other. We ask God for that gift to see it as a simple test. Please, God, we will pass that little exam. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> and we think of the sick of the parish. We think of people now in lockdown for seven months, many of the elderly people in the parish. We ask God to bless them as best we can. We take them. Holy Communion is often just on the doorstep. Nobody touches anybody else. And so we ask to bless them. We've got to be very patient, I think, and read the signs of the times. Lord, hear us. And we think of the sick. We think of Bobby, a good neighbor, just lives very close to us. We think of people listening prayerfully today who've asked for prayers. We think of Lucy. We think of Yvonne, Patrick, Francis. There's also Billy, there's Mary, there's a couple of children as well and some families. We ask God to be with them in these difficult times. Lord, hear us. And we ask our Lady's intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, 
the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now to the hour of our death. Amen. Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the souls of deceased members of the Heffernan family. They'll be listening this morning. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord, wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me, Lord, from all of my sins. I pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, we pray in the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, your beloved Son, your Word, through whom you made all things whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. He fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in the same way when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once for giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord. 
And therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of her death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with you, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome into your mercy and the light of your face, Lord, the deceased members of the Heffernan family. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we stand and pray with great confidence to the Father, using the words which Jesus, who is our Saviour, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Kingdom and power and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Let us offer a sign of peace to the people in the church upstairs. Let's offer a sign of peace to the people watching prayerfully in their homes. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away all the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Any Eucharistic ministers in the congregation from any parish, any country, any continent?
The Blessed Sacrament is now exposed in the monstrance, and people may watch prayerfully any time during the day or during the night. Our communion antiphon. We will ring out our joy at your saving help and exult in the name of our God. We'll thank God for his many gifts in a moment of precious silence. And a special prayer for those people on request who cannot receive the sacrament but would like to receive Jesus in spiritual communion. <clears throat> My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart so that I may unite myself entirely to you now and forever. Never permit me to be separated from you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. <laughs> Tomorrow's Monday, and Monday to Saturday, 10 o'clock every morning here. You don't need to register for the 10 o'clock Mass, but you should register for Sunday, 11 or 6 o'clock in the evening. In the meantime, enjoy the day as best we can, and God bless. Mm -hmm.